Hi everyone, in this video I brought you another new exciting Sigma lens, this time for APS-C sensor cameras, the brand new Sigma 23mm f1.4 DCD and C lens. I'm sure many of you have been eagerly waiting for this lens and for a good reason. Converted to full frame, this lens is equivalent to a 35mm lens, which is perhaps the most practical focal length for general use, from landscapes to portraits and even macro photography. The lens offers an extreme versatile field of view. As I mentioned, this lens is available for Sony E, Leica L and Fuji X mounts, specifically designed for APS-C cameras. This is actually the fourth prime DCDN lens, joining the 16mm, 30mm and the 56mm lenses. We now have a great collection of fixed focal length lenses, all with a maximum aperture of 1.4, which allows for beautiful blurred backgrounds and low light photography without generating too much noise. Now, Let's take a closer look at the external design and features of the new 23mm lens. True to Sigma's commitment to premium quality, the lens is well made with good materials and relatively light at 330 grams. It's not extremely compact but not bulky either. Its size is visibly smaller than the older 16mm lens, which is not a giant lens by any means. The design is as simple as possible as we have come to expect from this line of lenses. There are no buttons or switches, just a focus focus ring that is very comfortable to adjust and large enough to easily pull focus manually if necessary. Those who appreciate minimalist design will likely enjoy the 23mm lens design, but I miss the AF-MF switch, although you can set this switch on a quick button on modern cameras, so it's really just a matter of habit. The lens has a filter diameter of 52mm and comes with a petal-shaped plastic hood that fits perfectly and is useful in backlit situations. The lens mount is weather resistant, so it is dust and splash proof to use it in extreme conditions. That's enough about the design, let's see what it's capable of in terms of image quality and sharpness. We won't be disappointed because we can create beautiful images even at f1.4 and the lens has a very nice image quality. Sometimes I even forget that I'm holding an APS-C camera when I look back at these pictures. So the sharpness is excellent, even when zoomed in on the image at full open aperture, we see a very sharp image, although at 1.4 the image is slightly softer both in the center and at the edges, but it can still be considered very good. It improves a lot at f2, and we see that there is not only a significant improvement at the edges, but also in the center. From this point on, the image is razor sharp in the center, but it can still improve in the corners at f2.8 and f4. We get the sharpest image around f4, where it performs very well across the entire image. There is nothing to complain about regarding autofocus either. Really nothing. The lens is silent, incredibly fast and accurate when tested with modern mirrorless cameras. In video mode it perfectly adjusts the focus even when tracking or making large focus changes without any focus hunting. It's worth taking a moment to appreciate that how fast and accurate the camera follows my eye at f1.4, not only during a slow walk, but even while running with no delays or pulsing. Focusing is easier in photo mode of course, but fast focus changes are still very important if we want to switch from one subject to another. Autofocus also shows what it's capable of, as it can immediately switch between the two end focus points, so we can focus quickly from the foreground to the background or vice versa, which is usually the biggest challenge in photo mode. There is also no hunting or pulsing here, it immediately finds the focus point and nicely keeps it. Unfortunately, when examining focus breeding, the situation is not as rosy. If we look at the edges, we can see significant focus breeding as the edge of the image moves during larger transitions. It is important to be aware of this and pay attention to it, especially if we are focusing on large transitions. Looking at chromatic aberration, we can see that it is still present at 1.4 on high contrast edges, but the good news is that it improves significantly when stopped down to f2 and it is minimized. At f2.8 and f4 it improves again and it is hardly noticeable, and at f5.6 it practically disappears. However, 
However, we do see plenty of vignetting, especially at wider apertures, which quickly disappears. At 1.4, we see strong darkening in the corners, which improves almost equally with each aperture change. At f2.8, the corners are almost completely clear, but they brighten up eventually from f4. There is distortion, namely barrel distortion, but it's not extremely distracting from a distance. However, if we shoot closer, straight lines can become curved, but we can easily and quickly correct this in post. The lens has truly beautiful bokeh. Even with an APS-C camera at 1.4, we can achieve incredible subject separation and a beautiful, non-distracting blurred background. The bokeh balls are perfectly circular, even at f5.6, thanks to the nine blade aperture. At wider apertures, we see a cat's eye effect at the edges of the image, but this is not surprising and from f2.2, it completely disappears and we see perfectly round bokeh balls even at the edges of the image. The close-up point of the lens is unbelievably good. The 25cm close-up point is considered very good for this focal length and we can easily take macro style photos and videos with it. You can see that these are really good close-up photos and when paired with an f1.4 aperture, the background blur takes on a whole new level. At this point, even with our APS-C cameras, we can achieve such beautiful and pleasant background blur that it's not easy to achieve even with our full frame cameras, so this is a great feature of the lens. But let's summarize and see who this new 23mm Sigma lens is good for and what it's good for. First of all, it's obviously a great choice for those who use APS-C cameras as it's designed for that and fits perfectly with compact camera bodies. Coming from an a7 IV and a7S III, I was very surprised at how much weight difference there is between an APS-C system and the full frame system, so I think I'll be experimenting more with similar camera bodies and lenses in the future. The 23mm focal length is simply perfect for these bodies, as it corresponds to the full frame 35mm, which is my favorite focal length, and I think it can be extremely versatile. If we are further away, it's perfect for landscape photography or for photographing buildings or cityscapes, but if we are closer, we can even do portraits or macro shots or take smaller details with it, thanks to the super close-up point. So overall, the beautiful image quality, the brightness of the lens, the incredible fast and accurate autofocus, the good close-up point, the affordable 5 49 USD price and the possibilities in the 23mm focal lengths make for an extremely usable little lens. It's so good that while I used to recommend the Sigma 16mm 1.4 lens to everyone as their first lens for APS-C cameras, now I definitely recommend the new Sigma 23mm lens and I honestly believe you won't be disappointed with this new lens. So that's all I wanted to say in this video. If you liked it or found it useful, don't forget to let me know in the form of a like, subscribe to my channel for more content like this and feel free to comment down below if you have any further question. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next video.